Hello and welcome. You might have noticed Anzil can be activated using Alt F2 in your left top corner in whatever game you're playing. Maybe you want it to just disappear. In this case, just start the game, go into a 3D level and in that level press actual Alt F2 like I just did and this will appear. Nvidia Anzil, a tool for making epic screenshots. It uh, can be pretty, pretty nifty. I can move a camera as I like and take shots from various perspectives. That's what this tool is for and that's what it does. I can move around faster with shift. And this is here in Wet Work, uh, which um, is a little indie Hitman style game that I quite like. And I noticed it by accident. After ignoring it for many, many times, I possibly even accidentally turned it on and was quite impressed by what you can do with it. If you just wanted to get rid of it, all you have to do is press Alt F2 in the game. By the way, this is also how you get rid of it. Alt F2, Alt F2, Alt F2, Alt F2, Alt F2. You can also escape. But this game is not very optimized for Anzil. In-game key commands still affect the game. For example, Q, which rotates Anzil, also and opens the inventory, so that's very weird. Anyways, once you have done this, opened Anzil in the game, this notification at the beginning should not appear anymore. However, if it still does, then just follow me with the uh, steps in this tutorial to make one or multiple screenshots, and then I'm quite sure Anzil will disappear, having saved in the settings, uh, in the registry actually, the information that you did use it and that there is no more need to annoy you with that little notification or to remind you that it exists even though it is rather subtle Dragon Rider, I haven't even noticed this pretty cool looking poster in the game oh, and didn't even know there was one here so anyways, what is Anzil, what it's good for? it is, as I said, a tool for making cool screenshots so I'm just gonna stand somewhere where I'm in the light and uh, let's see, maybe I'll get my phone. Uh, right, so one thing in wet work is annoying that all the UI elements will be kind of still displayed because again, this is not optimized, but soon I, I, th I hear there will be a patch in which you can hide all UI elements. Uh, I can use I to hide at least some of the markers and activate items remotely that's supposed to Hide, yeah, that, that hides nearly everything, so that's pretty good. So anyways, in any game scene, I can just press F, uh, Alt F2 and then a left click and move the mouse. I can, uh, yeah, target in first person mode and with WASD I can move around. The regular arrow keys do not work. They control for some reason the interface on the left. Sure, why not? Oop, I accidentally used E there. Alright, so what we can change here is, for example, field of view or zoom in effects or GoPro effects. Uh, for thumbnails, for example, zoom in is very useful. Then you can have some interesting scenes. Here, what is going on between these two? Uh, X and Z are used for up-down movement, by the way. This, this is pretty, pretty okay. So there's also this user interface element in the center that's unfortunate and the text at the top left that will also be repeated. I will show you later what this means. So we have uh, this field of view stuff. Well, let's hide that for now. We have game settings like bloom intensity and bloom scale, dreamy effects. But for now, let's just get rid of it. And then we have style transfer. This is quite strange. Uh, we have to download some stuff for that. I don't think it will work immediately, but let's see. Last time I had... I mean, I, it didn't work immediately. I had to restart the game. Also, it doesn't work in all levels of this game because apparently I don't have enough RAM. I have the GTX 970, which only has 4 gigabytes, I think. Um, right, so I cannot pick any style yet. Anyway, so we're gonna look at this later, after I, have, I restart this. Then there's effects, effects like brightness contrast. You can change the exposure. Like in photography, contrast, color correction, uh, highlights, and shadows. I like to turn down shadows because they are a bit too high often in the game. Right, uh, but let's change this to black and white instead. And what I really like about this is enable depth. So we can control at which distance 
it gets enabled so we couldn't make so we could make these two characters have color and the background is uh, black and white or the opposite and since we're talking about depth let's look at depth of field which is my favorite again this one only works on in this level of wet work for example in the uh, other level there are currently only two it just doesn't because my graphics card is not powerful enough i believe or maybe they didn't compile it correctly anyways i think focus depth defines at what level it is focused and then we can configure how much blur is applied we can invert it this doesn't seem to work near blur curve far blur curve hmm let's try this again we have some guys back there by the way this might be an even better shot yeah i'm not sure this is working correctly currently no actually it is it is i can blur the background only currently for example all right so that's a, a filter i like we can do the same with green screen also focus depth uh, it's kind of uh, annoying to get rid of a green though but it is possible and then letterbox yeah letterbox uh well that's not so great old film is just some overlay special effects is just some instagram filter uh, stickers is just ridiculous oh oh great yeah okay okay sure why not tilt shift is fake field of de uh, depth of field and vignette another overlay and we can also combine them so if we press this plus we can add the oh details we didn't look at details at this one for example yeah and at the top of all that let's add another i mean one depth of field yep Yeah, I like that. Even though I'm not going to use that picture. But this is what Anzal can do for you. But once you're done, it allows you to make high resolution screenshots. If you use the capture type super resolution, you can make high resolution screenshots, crazy sizes. So the minimum is 4K. Let's go for, is this 8K maybe? I'm going to use enhance. I have no idea what that means or what it does, but let's do this. As you can see, it takes screenshots of different parts of the screen one after the other and then at the end it stitches them together at the top you can see what folder it got saved in and when it's complete it also notifies you at the top so here we have all the screenshots i made in the past as you can see there's this issue that user interface elements get baked into the sub screenshots so we have these elements all over the screen it's really weird and here is the latest work and as you can see, there's always this dot on each field. Although uh, the text is this has disappeared, that is nice. Not sure why. And the dots are they are so uh, even. It could seem like an intended effect, but this is really strange here. You can also make 360 type screenshots. Um, I don't think this worked. I yeah, I don't think this worked at all. Some of these are used for thumbnails some are just experiments and oh man this one was so high resolution i had to load for a moment they are all quite high in resolution this one is an edited version and this one has a lot of user interface baked on top of it as you can see because the uh, this is like a list of possible interactions and that is very full of possibilities right now yeah but this is probably the best scene I made so far. Too bad about the user interface stuff. And this is the same scene with the uh, black and white with depth of field. And a similar shot also with depth of field. So this is what Ansel is about. Uh, let's just get out of this map, go to the main menu. We're going to switch to the other map. And again, I'm not sure if the problem is that the developer didn't bake the map uh, sufficiently. Or if the problem is that I don't uh, have enough RAM on my computer. Whichever it is, 
let's take a look at what cool kind of screenshots we can do with uh, weapons. So Alt and F2. Oh, and it actually preserved these filters, so that's pretty cool. But the depth of field thing, it doesn't work on this map. Again, I cannot tell exactly why, but it just doesn't doesn't work. Everything gets blurred with it. It's very sad. I think when we add the green screen one, hmm, I thought we would get some kind of message where it says uh, necessary information missing cannot use this filter on this uh, on this level or something. Can we try again? No, sometimes it gives me that uh, notification. How about style transfer? If we enable this, okay, none. We, we're gonna restart the game and try again in a moment. But basically now I can position myself, uh, the camera rather, in some cool position and we could make a cool screenshot out of this and then render it at whatever resolution we desire. So I'm gonna add again some uh, brightness, no not brightness contrast, I prefer the details one. I turn the HDR toning usually all, all the way up. Yeah, let's let's go like this. And you can also just make a normal screenshot. Click, and it's done. You can make the 360 screenshots here, the stereo, free, no, that's just stereo. And then there's 360 stereo, it's crazy. But let's go for super resolution and uh, just 4K. It still uses nine sub screenshots. So three times three. And here's the end result. Pretty sharp, but pretty annoying user interface stuff. As I said, this will be taken care of by the developer, but look at this. Gorgeous. Eh, Zig Zauer, we can read that even. Can't read that in game. All right, so I just killed the whole game. Let's restart it. Oh, and here we have again the notification. Strange, I could swear that it would disappear if you make use of Enzel for a while. Maybe it will take a little while. Anyways, we're gonna start in the apartment with this setup and uh, let's uh, go. All right, so let's get into position. No, not like this. Come on. Oh no, I think I'm stuck. Okay, saved. So, uh, let's get the gun and uh, let's make a screenshot. But first, shoot. All right, okay, we got the target and Alt F2. We couldn't save the exact uh, blast. There was uh, there were some more particles when I press Alt F2. But look at these. Look at this. This is beautiful. So we can definitely make a nice screenshot. Too bad about the info text here, but still pretty darn cool. Let me see field of view. Let's switch that a bit. Let's see maybe like this. That seems a bit excessive. Yeah, let's turn it down. Yeah, this is cool. Except you cannot see how big the gun is. I think this is a good shot. We're gonna leave the filters for now, but let's try style trans... Well, first of all, I'm gonna bake one of these because this is just too epic. Hmm, forgot to enable enhance. Let's do that for next time. So let's try style transfer, hopefully. Yep. Oh, okay, it says not enough GPU VRAM for transfer, but it did work in the past, so I'm not sure why. Not enough GPU VRAM. Maybe because I'm recording this at the same time. Let me just restart the game. Alright, first thing, I'm gonna just try to use this. Alright, here we go. So it actually does work. We're just gonna get into position. Okay. Also, you can only move in a certain distance from where you are. I'm not sure exactly why, but there there is a limitation. And whatever, that's fine. Let's get somewhere closer to a cool scene. We don't have anything in our inventory. And... Uh, oh, F, F, come on. All right, here we go. That looks kind of cool. We are in a weird pose while we are getting shot at. And now let's try to use this style transfer and not enough GPU VRAM, so apparently you need to really have some good hardware for this. Yeah, let's restart the game. Okay, let's hope this just works. Style transfer works. And we do have different textures. I'm not exactly sure what is going on, how this is better than just photoshopping it, but I guess it does treat different objects differently. Yeah, it does give my guy some outlines that would otherwise be 
destroyed or would have to manually be adjusted. So we can get some pretty cool effect here. Not exactly sure how this works, not exactly sure how this is useful, except for looking at it once and saying cool. But here we are, mm, this is nice. Yeah, I think we're done. That's it, that was the last one. Can we check the low quality? Oh, okay, cool. Especially, I especially like how the user interface gets affected by this. Very curious indeed. Alright, let's talk about the technical requirements for Anzel. It has its own website on geforce.com slash hardware slash technology slash Anzel. And I th at first I thought it was really hard to find what graphics card you need to have, but there's a list of supported GPUs. And it starts with the 20 series uh, RTX cards, then the 10 series GTX cards, the GTX 9 series, the GTX 8 M series, and it continues until the GTX 7 series. I currently have the GTX 970, this one. And it works good, but sometimes I run out of RAM. I used to have GTX 750 Ti, which only has 2 gigs, so that one would have been a problem, probably for all of wet work. So it continues down to 650 and then 680M seems to be the last. Anything below probably will not work. And then we have this page which lists games supported by NVIDIA Anzel. Optimal game settings Anzel, yeah, here. So we got 7 Days to Die, 300 Ying Xion, GTA 5, Rust, Starcraft, Civilization 5, oh yeah, Hitman 2, Half-Life 2, interestingly enough, and uh, Mad Max, Dota 2, for example. The thing is, I didn't install anything for this to work, but NVIDIA claims you need to install experience. Here, this guide, how to use NVIDIA Anzel, claims that you have to install the latest game, oh, game ready driver. I see, I see. I do have the latest driver. I don't have any of the other nonsense that comes with GeForce Experience, though. And then you check the list of games which we just looked at. Let me just scroll down to the bottom so you can have a good look at it by pausing the video. Open range, outpost 0, a third of that. Watchdogs 2, Cube 2. Elite Dangerous, Fallout 4, Rustpunk, never heard of that. This is the latest GeForce experience, I do not I do not want the whole experience, I just want parts of it, do not install. So instead I'm just gonna download this, which is just the driver instead of GeForce experience. Alright, so here we have a choice at least. There used to be a much more detailed one though. But yeah, let's install the graphics driver without experience. Let's customize it. Alright, so if we look back at the guide, it says download and install our latest game-ready driver. Uh, the GeForce Experience thing is a trick kind of thing. I mean, I don't know what they have to gain from us installing GeForce Experience, but it is really annoying. You can find a link uh, to the game-ready driver or you just use this downloader and then you have to click yourself through it like I did here. Basically, we only need the graphics driver. We definitely... I definitely don't need any of this 3D stuff. I do have the latest physics, so I don't know if this is gonna uninstall it, so I'm just gonna leave it on. And this is gonna update me a few versions. Man, I hope if this doesn't bring any new bugs. But let's do this. And then uh, after that I'm gonna try Anzel as well. Maybe it will actually work better. I kinda doubt it. And you know what? I'm also gonna install Half-Life 2 so we can test that. Alright, so it's installing. Alright, so trying to record this while installing failed. I got a black screen and the recording, well, it was corrupted. But apparently the installation was successful because the version is now updated here. So I'm not gonna bother trying to install again and just gonna hope for the best. Alright, so here we are in Half-Life 2. Pressing Alt, Alt F2 does do nothing. Alright, so Half-Life 2 did not work. I'm waiting for Episode 2 to install, but I'm not sure that is even supported. I don't think it is. However, Arma 3 is, and I happen to have Arma 3. So let's try it on Arma 3. Alright, here we are. Let's see. Alt F2. Nothing. Alt F2. Nothing. Man, I have no idea how people enable it. 
But on the other hand, this was not on the supported list. Half-Life 2 was, but not this, not the uh, so-and-so episode. Maybe only the VR version allows it or something. Alright, so I happen to have Atom RPG, and it's on the supported list. Let's see if we can use it here. Alt F2, no effect. Alright, so this is red out, and this one happens to have Anzil enabled. Finally something. Let's just do one... We cannot do it in the menu. Anzil session can't be activated at the moment. Fair enough. Alright, can we do it now? No. Anzil session can't be activated at the moment. I know, I'm impatient. Okay, so now we can start. This is way dark. So I'm gonna start with... Filter details and... Wait, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, brightness contrast, yeah, shadows all the way down, gamma up. And let's see if we can also add perhaps uh, depth of field. Oh, oh yeah, depth of field. This is looking nice already. And these reflections are so cool. But we're gonna just go ahead and... Uh, oh, oh yes. We're just gonna go ahead and continue. Just fly around a little, get into position. Alright, so the nice thing about this game is it removes all the uh, UI for the snapshots, that's cool. And here we can rotate, uh, get into... yeah, we... wait a second. Did I press... Ex okay, so we have this user interface, uh, the crash effect, which maybe even is intended. This one we cannot get rid of, because we crash into the wall. Well, let's, let's get clear and get into the sun. And let's take a shot here. Uh, yeah, this is a bit against the light, but sure, why not? Let's let's try it. Let's reduce the field of view. I think I want it like this. Let's give it a try. Capture type. So this one does not allow 360 screenshots, for example. That's interesting. Let's go for super resolution. I'm just gonna go for 4K. Enhance, whatever that, that means, and we're done. So now we have the red out folder, and just look at... I mean, this is not so fantastic, because I only did 4K, but it's, it is pretty impressive still. Alright, then we have Borderlands 2. Let's see what we can do. So currently I cannot press F, uh, Alt F2, and I did not get any of these nice Anzil notifications so far. Still nothing, so I'm kind of giving up on this now. Alright, so this took quite a while. It looks like I had to go to this path, see Program Files, NVIDIA Corporation, Anzil Tools, and open with Shift and right-click, open a command window here. Some people will have a PowerShell. If you open the PowerShell, you might try the same command, or you can just, after you started the PowerShell, run CMD, and then enter the stuff I'm gonna enter now. And what I'm enter is NV Camera Enable, and press Tab, and Space, and Dash, H, enter. We want to enter the same, but with whitelisting everything. I'm just gonna press up, delete the dash H, and control V, and the camera enable.exe, whitelisting everything. Alright, and now if I start, for example, Half-Life 2, I do not get a notification at the top. And if I press it now, Anzil session can't be activated at this moment. And still it doesn't work. And still, and still, same here. So this is Borderlands 2 again, and again it doesn't work, no matter how often I press it. It does freeze the screen for a fraction of a second, but it doesn't work. So I thought maybe Half-Life Deathmatch would work, but nope, still doesn't. Alright, so then there's this Switchblade. Doesn't work either. Maybe because of its because it's the tutorial, but there are no players to be found. So I can't test it here either. Alright, super inefficient golf. Anzil can be used yada yada yada, so that's nice. We cannot use it right now, can we? Right. Let's see if we have any levels saved. And we can use it. We can use it immediately. Um, except WASD, movement speed is super slow right now. Maybe the level scaling is just huge. 
or because I'm doing it while the camera is actually trying to move around. Alright, let's get out of here and wait for the game to actually begin. Here we go. Okay, so I forgot how to play this, but let's try Anzal anyways. Uh, none of that. I keep trying to use Q and E for up-down movement, but it's Z and X. Okay, so let's make a nice blurry background for, uh, shot here. Depth of field, and yeah, basically that's all I wanted. Let's maybe add details. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Except, oh yeah, I've, I accidentally overwrote the other one, so let's add depth of field again, and perfect. Yep, like this. Fan freaking tastic, just like this. Now let's make a super resolution. No, no 360 for me. Super resolution. Four times enhance snap. Oh snap! Processing file. Dot dot dot. And it's done. And here's a new folder, and here's the exported file. And look at how far we can zoom in. Gorgeous. I don't know why it works for some games and not for others. Maybe they removed the support after a while or announced it but didn't actually add it. Alright, now we are in Euro Truck Simulator. Is it 2018? And Anzal Session can't be activated at the moment. Alright, let's have a little fun instead. Nice. Alright, I give up and install GeForce Experience, but it doesn't change anything. I get this Alt Z overlay notification, and I can access it. But Anzal still doesn't work. So it turns out Hitman 2 has Anzal, but... Oh, and I can use it now. Wow. Okay, I guess you can do stuff like that. Or maybe stuff like that. Ah yes, looks like if you're aiming in Hitman 2 and use Anzal, then you have some kind of depth of field issues that you can't get rid of, it seems. Well, that's good to know. Another game where it works. So I don't know what's up with Anzal. I will try to investigate if you know anything about it or you have games where it works and have games on the list where it doesn't work. Please let me know in the comments so we can get some kind of intel going. Because this is confusing as heck, but at the same time it can be used for some freaking gorgeous stuff. So I want to be able to use it. Alright, so this is it for Anzal. We can of course make an up we can also make a standard screenshot or a high resolution one. I hope this was useful. Make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if it was. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, say ciao to this weird looking guy. Ciao.